Welcome to Entry Point Virtual Church. We are so glad that you've joined us today. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. We shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. Freedom has many difficulties, and democracy is not perfect. But we have never had to put a wall up to keep our people in. Ich bin ein Berliner. Join me as I pray. Dear God, you know that things are difficult right now. You see that we are growing weary. You see our tears and you are well aware of our fears. You know that we are struggling, God. We are trying to put one foot in front of the next and keep moving forward, but some days are just harder than others. We ask for your help today, God, and every day in this world that remains upside down. Bring healing and understanding to this world. Give us the ability to endure the challenges of our time. Help our bodies and our hearts to grow stronger and wiser. Help us to continue to focus on the people and the causes that are most important in our lives. Help us, God, to remain steady in our compassion and our generosity. Today, we spend time together considering the life and the wisdom of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. May we learn something today that changes us, that challenges us, that makes us better, that helps our world to become more beautiful. God, we are indeed thankful for what we have, even in these uneasy times. Thank you, God, for guiding us and loving us every moment of this life. Amen. Good morning. November is one of my favorite times of year. It's that time of year when we start transitioning to the cherished holiday season with kith and kin. For all those of us who work in state government, it's that month of the year that we actually get four paid holidays with Election Day, Veterans Day, and two days for Thanksgiving. As a male, I enjoy the concept of no shave November and allow my beard to grow out. Looming over the joys of November, however, is the annual historical reminder of the tragic Kennedy assassination 
each November 22nd. For those of you who were around to live it, you undoubtedly remember precisely where you were and what you were doing at that moment you heard the news. For others of us, we certainly look at this tragic historical event and wonder how such a thing could ever occur in the United States. As somber as the date of November 22nd can be, it's also a time in which we remember who Kennedy was as a man and a leader. Yes, he was a political figure, but he was not mired in politics. And regardless of which side of the aisle it is in which you hang your hat, there's much to be learned from John F. Kennedy in a broader sense. We need only look at some of his famous words to learn from his insights. So today, I'd like to examine three of his quotations, apply them to our own lives, and learn from the wisdom of JFK. The first quote I'd like to share with you this morning is this, Change is the law of life, and those who look only to the past or the present are certain to miss the future. The older we get, the more those words ring true. As youngsters, we find ourselves evolving through numerous physical changes. Just think about the changes a newborn undergoes in its first year of life. Not to mention the thrills of the changes that come with puberty about 12 to 13 years later. Yet the youth's surroundings and environment often are static and predictable. It's when we take that step out into the adult world that we find ourselves propelled to light speed changes. Like we see in Star Wars when they go warp speed with all those stars zooming by. We change jobs. We change locations. We have changes within our families going from newlyweds to young parents to parents of teens to grandparents. As we age, we see the seasons of change come much quicker than we'd even prefer. Change is a constant of life. My girlfriend's father just turned 90 years old about a month ago. Now, to mix a couple of similes, he's as sharp as a tack and as fit as a fiddle. One of the things he notes is that he's been alive to see every evolution of the telephone. From hand-cranked versions, to party lines, to that heavy black rotary dial version, to sleek touch-tone phones of varying colors, from the flip cell phone to the smart cell phone. He's seen and used all of them. He hasn't dwelt upon the past holding on to the hand-cranked phone of yesterday. Rather, he's evolved to using the smartphone he carries in his pocket today. Now, we shouldn't equate the idea of change to abandonment or devaluation of the past. The past is part of our journey. It's from whence we came. We should look back reflect, and chart how we've progressed from point A to point B. This is where we find growth. However, if we refuse to accept this journey and stick our head in the sand, we remain unvarying, unchanged, and, and unable to embrace the world of today. George Carlin once stated, I put a dollar in a change machine. Nothing changed. And those who dig in their heels to the change and resisting change experience the same thing. Some who refuse to change see inferiority among certain races and genders. Others who refuse to change cling onto ideas that no longer uh, propel humanity to a level of coexistence and respect for one another. JFK warns us against that in his words, and we should heed them so we may not only apply the evolutionary nature of change in our own lives, 
but so that we also can sometimes be the one who is the catalyst for that change. Another quote I'd like to share with you from JFK is this, Those who dare to fail miserably can achieve greatly. Failure is a given. It's going to happen to us throughout our lives. It's from these failures, however, that we learn and succeed in ways that would not have been possible without failing in the first place. Now, we know some of the proverbial stories of failure. Walt Disney was told he lacked creativity. Steve Jobs was booted from his own company. Einstein couldn't speak fluently until age nine. Uh, Steven Spielberg made poor grades in high school and was rejected by many colleges before he finally got in. We also know from these examples that not one of these individuals, each of whom is inarguably extremely successful in his own right, allowed failure to determine them or to deter them from achieving. The failure did not define them, rather they defied the failure. Now, some of you may know the song, I'm Yours, by Jason Mraz. And it is a line I've always taken to heart. He says, I reckon it's my turn to win some or learn some. Notice how he stays clear of the traditional win some or lose some. He states, win some or learn some. You see, it's not a matter of win or lose. If we find ourselves not achieving our goals, falling short of aims we have, being challenged by obstacles, wrong turns, and unexpected detours, it's not a loss. It's an opportunity to learn. And in this learning, we recalibrate, reposition, and reform as we go at it again. It's this relentless effort that ultimately leads to success. The third quote from JFK that I'd like to share with you this morning is this. As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. We as human creatures can be very good and convincing with words. The car salesman uses words to persuade. The politician uses words to make promises. Mothers use words to cheer up and comfort a crying child. Words are powerful. However, just like with the Wizard of Oz, when we pull back the curtain on our words, they sometimes are proven to be a mere facade. There's a story of a woman walking along a creek, and lying next to the creek was a snake who wanted to get across but was una unable to do so on its own. So the snake asked the woman to help him across. The woman replied, No way! You're a snake and you'll bite me! The snake begged and implored of her, Absolutely not! I'd be so grateful for your assistance that I won't bite you. So the woman picked up the snake and safely carried it across to the other side of the creek. And as she placed the snake on the ground, the snake leapt up at her and bit her. In shock, the woman claimed, you said you wouldn't bite me. The snake claimed, you knew what I was when you picked me up. You see, the snake's actions did not match the words of the promise that he made to the lady. Can we think of times in our own lives when our actions did not match the words we spoke? How about those times when we, with our words, made a commitment to a friend or loved one that we never followed through with in our actions? How about those times, perhaps, when we expressed an apology with our words, but reoffended again for the same thing for which we apologized? How about those times when we promised God that we would honor and serve and have fallen through on our actions? I would venture a guess that at some time or another, we've found ourselves doing some or all of these things. 1 John chapter 3, verse 18 tells us this, Let us not love with word or talk, but in deed and truth. 
We need to embody what our words say. We shouldn't lament about the poor and underprivileged with our words and not ever volunteer to assist them in a soup kitchen or a clothing giveaway. We must refrain from, with words, offering to assist a neighbor with yard work and never pick up the rake to help them. We ought not with words tell a loved one that he or she is in our thoughts and prayers and never reach out to take their hand or embrace them. You might recall a movie from the year 2000 called Pay It Forward, from which the movement of paying it forward evolved. Simply put, paying forward is when someone does, does, not says, does something for you. And rather than paying that person back directly, you pass it along to another person instead. And we hear stories in the news about how people pay it forward. One such story involved a lady named Tracy Warshaw and her simple act of kindness, which led to an even greater contribution to the common good. Back in 2015, during the holiday season, Warshaw noticed that a man ahead of her in the line at the grocery seemed to have forgotten his wallet and couldn't pay for the few items he had accumulated. Without thinking, Warshaw paid for his items, and after the transaction was complete, the stranger asked for her name and took notice of her shirt, displaying on it where she worked. Then about a month later, Warshaw was working as a scheduling coordinator for the Piedmont Cancer Institute in Georgia, and was approached by two representatives from the Piedmont Foundation, who informed her that a man wished to donate $10,000 to the foundation in her name. In fact, the man, who wished to remain nameless, went so far as to contact Piedmont Healthcare's Vice President of Philanthropy to track Warshaw down, since he was only aware of her first name and appointment printed on the shirt she was wearing at the grocery store. Warshaw claimed, I'm just excited that one small gesture made a huge difference and impact on a lot of people. I hope it makes people think twice about doing something small for somebody. A woman's act of kindness that inspired two $10,000 donations to the Piedmont Healthcare Foundation just came full circle for her in a big way. Channel 2's Andre Washington explains how this all began when one man forgot his wallet at a grocery store. This Aldi's grocery store literally just made Tracy Warshaw's year. The Aldi Jefferson division would really like to present you with a year's worth of produce from us to you just to say thank you for, for what you oh do for the community. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. That's for the next 365 days, the Piedmont Healthcare employee won't have to worry about paying the cashier thanks to her one act of kindness. I'm really just overwhelmed. Back in December, Tracy paid for a man's grocery bill at a Cobb County Aldi's because he couldn't find his wallet. That man only knew Tracy's first name and saw she was wearing a Piedmont Healthcare t-shirt. To pay her back for oh, her kindness, he donated $10,000 to the Piedmont Healthcare Foundation in Tracy's name. He's awesome. <laughs> he is. <laughs> He's an awesome human being. To be equally awesome, company officials at the Aldi's decided to match that $10,000 donation. In honor of customers like Tracy who um, are so generous in giving to our community. And the two $10,000 donations will go to help cancer patients. The fund is in the name of Shirley Goodwin's daughter, Dana. She would be so excited about the people that it's helping. They do need help in every way. And Tracy agrees, saying the donations will both help and inspire people to give back. I'm excited for the help. There's so many patients and people in need. And just the reminder to just please, please, um, if you're able, just pay it forward. Paying it forward doesn't have to evolve, involve large sums of money as in this anecdote. It can be sim a simple gesture or act that goes a long way to make the difference in lives of others. Can you consider the wisdom of JFK today? Applying his insights and, and knowledge into our lives can assist us with this. We can embrace change and be an agent of its occurrence. We can use failure as a springboard to our achievements. 
we can use actions rather than mere words to make this a better world in which to live. On this 57th anniversary of his death, our assimilating to the wisdom of JFK is a fitting tribute to his legacy. That's me. That's me. And that's three people. And I'm going to help them. But it has to be something really big. Something they can't do by themselves. So I do it for them. Then they do it for three other people. That's nine. And I do three more. Articulation, please. Yes. I think it's a good idea. Sean? It's stupid. Adam? It's the honor system. People blow off the honor system. So what? Just because you do. <laughs> well, Trevor, the class seems to think that you've come up with an overly utopian idea. Look that word up in a minute. Like a perfect world? Mm-hmm. So? for watching our virtual service today. Please tune in next Sunday when we will declare that we are older and wiser. Our guest speaker for that service will be Betty Allison. See you then. In the meantime, have a great week and go in peace. Amen. <laughs>